Now, <laughs> we had that argument. Wasn't that waterfall going sideways just a second ago? It was. At least I think it was. Wonder where it goes. Wonder all you want, but I don't care to find out. Oh, what's wrong? You scared? We had that conversation about Gungaga and how, like, some people got lost in Gungaga and whether or not that's a good or bad thing. I think there's definitely an argument to be made there. I think here, if you get lost, it's doing its job. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I think that's pretty... I think that's pretty safe to say. If you get lost here, that's... They did it well, you know? Like, yeah, you shouldn't be lost in here forever and not be able to finish the game, but... You should definitely be getting quite disoriented in here. It should be a puzzle just to get through. Instead of having, like, some goofy Tetris puzzle you have to solve, the puzzle itself is the map. You know? The map itself is the puzzle. It do be a labyrinth. Okay, so I wonder... Let's see. What is that? Oh my god, is that a monkey ball? Here I go. What the? What's this dude doing? You got some laser beams? He's got some wild stuff. What the? Yeah, you should get lost and then randomly find a umbrella. That should be the, the way of things. You know, if they wanted to, they could have had this bit be like a super linear... See that piece of box floating in the air? They could have made this a super linear section and then just had, like, puzzles so you could come back and solve. Okay, listen, don't tell me how to solve it! Um... God, what is the point of having... This? Don't make me lose my mind, game. I'm going to go back to frickin' Horizon with the puzzles. What in the actual world is the point of having this puzzle if it tells you how to solve the puzzle? It is therefore just chores. You're just moving a box across the ground. It's so frustrating to me. Like, either have the puzzle or don't. But what is the point of having the puzzle and telling me how to solve it? That means all you're doing is making me push over box and calling it gameplay, you know? It's so silly. If you want to not have puzzles, that's fine. But then don't make me push the freaking box. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Alright, I think I'm gonna go back and see where the other area uh, went. Yeah, it's pretty frustrating. Like, I just don't get why I even have it, you know? I've felt the same way about Horizon. It's not even a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth problem. It's a video games in 2024 problem. I truly don't understand why they would even have the puzzle if you're going to tell me how to solve it, because it's not a fun puzzle. You're just pushing a box, you know? Might as well just have stairs. Then it's at least not boring to push a box. Yeah.
Yeah, but see, like, even if I'm even if I'm a game developer and I'm like, hey, we got this really cool box puzzle, and then I have a focus group, and the focus group is like, yeah, we had no idea what we were doing, then I would just take it out, you know? I wouldn't leave it in, but tell the player how to solve it. <laughs> I would just take it out. I would just put stairs there, you know? It's so ridiculous to think that people would be having fun pushing that box across the floor. It's not fun. So it's just it's just a weird game design thing that I don't understand. I've never really understood why that's a thing, and I've seen it in a lot of games over the past year. I just don't get it. Like, is that fun to like just hold all L2 and push the box? And be told where to... Like, I get having, like, a fun puzzle, but then being told how to do it. Like, some people enjoy being told how to do a puzzle and then doing the puzzle. But pushing a box isn't fun. You know? Like... It depends on the puzzle, really. There can be puzzles where you're told how to do it, and then you do it, and it's still fun. For sure. But that's not one of them. Uh, that's just pushing a box. You know? Yeah, I get that, Fitz, but again, just take it out then. Just have stairs, right? Like, I don't get the... I don't get the reasoning behind it. And, you know, there's some other puzzles where, like, they purposefully make it so that the game tells you how to do it, and then you do it, and then you feel smart, you know? Like, if you're doing, like, an Uncharted puzzle... The game can tell you how to do it, and you still might kind of feel smart for doing it, but no one feels smart pushing a box. <laughs> you know, like, again, yeah, it's like, it's weird. It's very strange. I don't get, I don't get the, just the, the mind behind it. I don't really understand it. But again, it's not really a rebirth problem. It's a video games in 2024 problem. It's just kind of a thing that we gotta deal with now in game design it'd be just as easy to just wait an extra two minutes before giving me the hint or just taking it out completely or just taking the hint out completely you know all three of those options seem fine to me I'm, I just don't really understand why it's specifically let's have an easy puzzle or a difficult puzzle but then immediately give the answer. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Way to go with down. I, I would have been way more happy just to see stairs there. You know? That was something. I don't know why I, like, snapped to ten feet away from the water. I like how he said, I can't believe we're doing this, like, as we were falling. Like, well, too late to say that. The one, the one that I like to point out from Forbidden West that's kind of a meme in our channel is uh, there was a puzzle where it uh, it asked us to put in a code and then it made it very apparent that the code was based on a date and then you read a, a message and it says like something about October and then the character sitting next to you immediately says October is the 10th month of the year. It's like, why go through the entire trouble of making a code and making it a date and then making me read the message to figure out that it's October just to immediately tell me October is the 10th month of the year? Like, it just feels like they went so out of their way to develop this puzzle just to give us the solution. Like, at that point, just have me open the door, you know, just make it a key. Like, just make it a physical key you pick up, you know? Like, it just seems so bizarre that they went through so much trouble to do that and then just ruin it immediately, you know? 
It's just very odd game design. And I, I, like I said, I'm seeing it in more and more games. Gen like genuinely, if you have a focus group that can't figure out that October is the 10th month of the year, then just take the puzzle completely out, you know? I've heard it's really bad with God of War as well. I haven't played Ragnarok yet, so... And that's a real shame because, like, at least with, at least with this game, you can be like, well, it's a new style game, yada yada. But like, God of War is known for its puzzles. The original games are known for those puzzles that would give focus groups, you know, make them cry, <laughs> because like, they have genuinely hard puzzles that you have to solve to move the story along. That's like a core value of the original God of War games. So it hurts even more to see it in Ragnarok being a, a successor to those games, right? At least with Forbidden West, you can be like, well, Horizon Zero Dawn was similar, you know? But it does kind of really suck to hear that Ragnarok was like that because the original God of Wars were known for those pretty difficult story puzzles. You genuinely had to use your brain to beat the original God of Wars. I remember getting stuck on several of the puzzles as a kid and uh, either being in the room for hours or having to ask my friend how to do it. Which I'm not saying is good game design, you know? There, there's an argument to be made that if you get stuck on a puzzle for that long, it's bad game design. I would disagree, but there is an argument to be made. But the point is, you know, either have it or don't. I don't get what this vine is for. I guess maybe it's for when we flip the... Let me flip it. Is there anything else here, though? Before we flip. There's two flippers. Hmm. Hmm. And I think they did a great job making the level itself the puzzle here. So I don't think we need a box puzzle. Anyways, you know? I don't think that's necessary. The level itself is a puzzle. I don't need to be pushing boxes. It's not a good game if you don't have a box puzzle. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe like, uh, maybe the higher ups went through this part and they were like, but where's the box puzzle? Every good game has a box puzzle. <laughs> you, you laugh, but like, I've heard goofier things. I've heard goofier things out of the higher ups in game design. It's, it's pretty bizarre how they think. Yo, thanks, Silver. I've heard a lot of, like, stuff with uh, Activision and stuff, and the developers having to fight to put in, like, the simplest of things. Like, they want to put in, like, a little Easter egg of, like, a... whatever. A teddy bear from the original Zombies maps they want to put in the new map. Just put it there. Just, just as an asset. Just put it on a desk or something, and it's like they have to fight to get it in. And it's like... Weird. Just crazy. Strange. It's just insane, dude. It's actually insane. Yeah, and, you know, that's another thing. I, I, I don't want to keep going on and on about this, but that's another thing where, like, sometimes game developers will put stuff in there. Like, let's have a box puzzle that the game just tells you how to do it in two seconds, but then you have to push this box to pad time. 
that makes sense. From a game development standpoint, that makes sense. We want to pad time, so let's put in this puzzle, but we don't want people to get stuck, so let's just give them a solution. That I understand. However, this is not a game we need to pad time. <laughs> you cannot, on any universe, tell me that we need to pad time in this game. No shot. So, yeah. Odd. XP up. Interesting. But yeah, I can see that argument. I can see that argument. Let's have a puzzle. Let's have a block puzzle that is has a very obvious solution. Or, you know, let's tell them the solution. But just have them push the box for the sake of padding time. Like, that makes sense. But, you know, definitely not what we're needing in this game. Almost the opposite. I almost feel like padding time is not... Um... Not good. Not respecting the player's time. There's so many other great things you could be doing in this game. No one wants to waste it pushing a box, you know? You spent all this time putting all this amazing stuff in the game. Don't waste my time doing dumb stuff, right? You want a game to be lengthy, but you also want it to respect the player's time. You hear that a lot with movies. You know, a movie can be long if all the everything you're seeing is valuable, but as soon as scenes aren't valuable, you're not respecting the, the viewer's time. I feel like you can definitely make that argument for games as well. This one also has three. Makes me wonder why the um... The flashback scene had the vacuum cleaner sections. Like, what's the point? The game's so long, we don't need to pad time with that. And that's not even a puzzle, it's just a very obvious roll it over the thing. I guess the one where you had to open the door was kind of a puzzle, but... Yeah, it makes me wonder, like, what the design decision was behind that. Not that that was, like, horrible or anything, it only took a minute, but... I do wonder, like, when they look back on it... If you were to ask the developer, like, why did you put this here? I wonder what they would say. Because again, there are really nice times where you do want to waste the player's time. Like when there's some kind of epic thing going on. Like, oh, is this person going to survive? Is this, you know, what's going to happen? And then you put the player through some really slow puzzle and it, it raises their anxiety levels. But obviously that was not what was happening in the, in the flashback. There was nothing going on. It was just like, hey, do this thing. <laughs> you know. There was no uh, anticipation for anything, it was just... Oh, vacuum cleaner time. Whoa, Cetrin Bangle. Zero Materia slots. So that's pretty cool, but uh, it's not that strong. It only has eight more defense. And four more magic defense. I can't imagine that ever being useful. Unless you are legitimately doing no materia. Like, yes. No materia run? Let's go. But other than that... <laughs> Yeah, it'll be nice when I do some no materia stuff. This my favorite. This my favorite staircase. Cool that that was like off the beaten path too. Like I had to go, had to flip it this way just for that. This is what blows my mind about this remake, man. Not only does this feel like the original temple, but even the puzzle solving is very si not puzzle solving, but the, the layout is very similar, where like you're going down one path just to get an item and then having to come back. Very similar to the original temple, where you had to like do the clock and go down a single path just to get like the ribbon and then come back. I've noticed that about a lot of the areas. It doesn't just look like the original, it feels like the original. 
think I want to go here. I don't remember. Oh, the other one. <coughs> Thank you, gaming. We will see. I don't know where it ends, so. We're just gonna play and see what happens. Okay, this is obviously the way we're supposed to go. Wasn't there another spinner? do this. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We went everywhere. How's it going, BD? Welcome. Ugh. He stand. But most importantly, he point. We hold this position until the Turks send word. Check your gear and be ready to depart at a moment's notice. Alright, you heard him. They're gonna hold their position. They're not gonna fight us. Okay, they fought us. I'll let go for you. <laughs> Did you notice I used Windstorm and my ATB didn't move? Somebody call an Amber Lance. Yo, check out this ancient vending machine. I'm a little sad we can't talk to the little dudes. Where's my, where's my little dude vending machine? down. Let me run to the bathroom real quick. Alright. Let's do it. Love these doors, by the way. They're pretty neat. Well, this ain't good. Dragon time. Look out. Sephiroth didn't randomly throw it at us this time. Wouldn't be a labyrinth without a guardian, right? And he's sick looking too. Don't piss it off more. Focus, guys. And it's Red Dragon. And so far, Temple has been like on point with the enemies and enemy names. I saw another target. 
An enormous, wor enormous worm that has sworn allegiance to the Cetra and now serves as guardian of their temple and its labyrinthian halls. La Labyrinthine? I've never even read this word. Labyrinthine? Halls. It possesses a unique organ that allows it to spew incinerating flames. Striking the scorched pillars and bringing them down on the dragon will pressure it. Destroying one of its wings while it is flying will cause it to plummet, pressuring it. Attacking its chest will reduce the range of Crimson Breath. It's immune to, like, everything. Including poison, which is new. So we need them to... We need to blast the pillar. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma 2 looking crazy. Don't say that. The game's gonna crash again. Oh my god. You like can't get out of this. Gotta be behind the pillar, that's kinda cool actually. That was not what I wanted to do. Yeah, my game actually crashed once. During Odin, too, and I've heard that other people have had crashes during Odin specifically. So I think it's only during Odin. Which they did not say anything about that in their patch notes, so hopefully they know about that. Eventually fix it. That's that's the only crash I've heard of. Oh, you don't have Blizzard? What about Gravity? Can you take over? Take it over. Yeah. Keep it together. Uh oh. Aerith. Run. Oh. She too slow. He just do. Wow! In front of the thing, or behind the thing. I don't. No! He's got to be close. This is such a cool fight. Is 
Don't let up. Get lost, huh? What's he doing? Get his legs. Duh. So, talking about upgrades, tell me this isn't like the biggest upgrade ever. This fight used to be like, unfortunately, one of the lamest in the game. Like, it's pretty memorable. I think everyone remembers the dragon, but like, he has three moves, and he's just kind of the boss, and then you fight Demon Wall, and it's way cooler. This has become like one of the coolest fights. Like, you can't say he's not memorable. Like, everyone remembers the dragon, but probably just because it's a dragon. <laughs> um, the actual fight itself is pretty lame. I just pr double pressured him? Oh, never mind. So yeah, this is, this is such a cool upgrade. That's a bit unfortunate. That's a bit unfortunate. I don't want to just limit him. But I think. Oh. I think this will work even better. Oh, look at that pressure. Dude. His abilities are so good. Never mind. You do you. You do whatever you want, I guess. Let's do this. We're out of luck. Oh my god. That's so cool. Hurry up, clap. Oh, you still live. That's not happening. Okay, Cloud. Cloud. Tifa just kicked a dragon in the head and it died. Nice. Oh, that old trick? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, the synergy abilities are so good to use, like, randomly. Not when they're staggered or pressured, but when the the enemy's actually doing stuff that you don't want them to do. Because it'll uh, interrupt and also, like, get you a buff and also pressure a bunch. So, like, it's way better to use them out of stagger to get to stagger or to turn the fight. They're honestly such a great addition. I didn't know I didn't know how I felt about them at the beginning, but man, I really love them now. As like an addition to the the combat loop. Especially that Bahamut fight we did. I still think about how awesome the the loop of that fight went. This is very different. <laughs> I thought for a second that was the black materia because it's a diamond it's like a pyramid which is similar to how it is in the original wait what in the world 
What? Look. Whoops. I think the life stream's angry. At least, that's how it feels. Hey, Aerith, do you think you could explain that we don't mean any harm? I don't know. I mean, I'll try. killed us all. We're going after them, mate. The materia is our priority. We have to get to it first. Let's move. They're with Aerith. They'll be fine. It's got a point. The original Avalanche crew. This is dope. I don't think we've had this party forced yet. Um. Oh. I literally had to stop what I was doing. <laughs> I hear a clock. We about to meet the clock. Ah, dang, this beat is fire. Uh, so that scene was great. I was like, wow, this is very Final Fantasy X like. And then it did like the slow motion part. And I was like, okay, it's just Final Fantasy X. Like, wait, it's just actually. <laughs> wait, it's actually Final Fantasy X. That's not even a joke. It actually is. Um, I liked. How um... oh, this build up. I really liked the song, and I liked the middle part of the song where it was quieter and there was a bass. 
that felt like an OG base. Like it felt like Final Fantasy IX's base. Did you notice that? I don't know if that was like really on purpose or not, but there was a moment where it was very like, it had that like OG sounding base. It was neat. Um, does someone have fire? Okay. Yeah, that scene was really cool. I liked it. This is like Cries of the Planet mixed with Sephiroth's theme. I'm genuinely like got goosebumps with the music because like we've been praising the music this entire time and I feel like it's only getting better. It's only like building up to the best parts. Oh, this this battle. Wait, I gotta listen to this. Oh my god. Brother, I'm fighting some bees, okay? Calm down. Like... <laughs> oh my god. I'm fighting some bees and the saga is going outrageous. Also, these are the bees that you fight outside the temple in the, in the forest. The ones that give you berserk. Oh my god. Look, there's some bees. Ba -na 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 that synth hits. Oh my god. How's it going, Tarugo? We're all gonna die. Hey, get your shit together. Get him! Get ready. Oh, I had to dodge the other thing. Come on. Oh, stop. Attack me. Not with the... Not with the Maka. Oh, my goodness. Nice. Complete whip, Barrett. I was expecting a Barrett weapon, I'll be honest. Six linked, amazing attack, true strike. Okay. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Okay, everything's damaged. Okay. <laughs> Are we gonna... Are we gonna even... Are we going to even give thought to the idea that this isn't her best weapon? Because holy moly. Also, I didn't even read True Strike. Is it exactly the same? Yeah. Man, we still have ATB Ward True Strike. I don't know, man. That might still be the most busted thing. They might have made all these new abilities and all these new mechanics, and that still might be the best thing. Guess we'll find out. So 
so this is like totally random, but I was just kind of curious. Um, what do you guys think about the weapon chests being purple? And like, obviously a weapon chest. Do you like it or dislike it? Or doesn't matter. I, d I just wonder, because like, I could see the argument of like, I like to be able to open a chest and then be surprised when it's a weapon instead of already knowing. Yeah. But I kind of like it because I see it off in the distance and I'm like, weapon, I want, give me, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's like hype as you're walking up to the chest, you know. That's such a minor thing, but I was just thinking about it, so I figured I'd say it. But I wondered if anyone was like, no, I hate them. I hate the purple chests. Yeah. The only evil one was that one that you couldn't get yet until you came back with the other characters, but and I wanted it so bad I like spent 10 minutes in that room trying to figure out how to get it. That one was evil. That'd be cool if in the final game we had like actual ultimate weapon quests, but I guess we'll see. Too long. Too long from now. I'll say. Time Tifa is still so fun to use. I Man, I don't know. It also depends on how balanced they want the weapons to be. Because going into this game, I thought they were going to do the same as remake and have the game, the weapons, be really balanced. In which case, having an ultimate weapon ruins that so if you're gonna have the weapons still be balanced then don't have an obvious ultimate weapon and yeah probably just put it in a chest um but if you're gonna do more like this game where it does feel like the later weapons are pretty much better there may be a niche reason to use another weapon but otherwise later weapons equal better then yeah, have some like super crazy quests you have to do with each character to get their final weapon. That would be, I think that would fit into the gameplay loop of this game as well as being very similar to the original because that's how it's done the original, so. But it wouldn't make sense like in Remake, you know, because the weapons are supposed to be more balanced. So if you just have one ultimate weapon, it's like you ruin that whole thing. Ruin that whole mechanic by just having a weapon that everyone's gonna always have equipped. <laughs> Having said that, in this game, I feel like they wanted to balance the weapons, but either did a poor job of it or are slowly building us towards the third game where they're not gonna be balanced because, like, I can't see any argument as to why you would ever not equip this weapon on Tifa. Like, what? Uh, actually, actually, now that I'm looking at it, their we their attack is actually pretty low. I didn't realize the crystal gloves I had on had pretty low attack. So never mind, never mind. Kaiser Knuckles are still by far the strongest. So depending on what the cores are, 
there's definitely an argument to be made to equip Kaiser Knuckles. In fact, I probably will equip Kaiser Knuckles on her. Some of these, that like leather gloves, are totally garbage, I feel. But, I mean, they're also the starting weapon. I don't know, there is still some pretty good balance. So yeah, you would kind of ruin that if you literally had an ultimate weapon. Yeah, Buster Sword has Reprieve in this one, but other than that, it's kind of useless. But it does at least have a niche use of Reprieve, so you can make the argument, oh, I want it for this fight for Reprieve. And he still has Rune Blade, which still has more magic than any of his other weapons, so, like, that is good for magic. Yo, this is wild! This is, like, North Crater! Yet another mechanic they're using early. What was the other one? There was another one that they did early that I was like, oh, now we can't do that later. Forget what it was. I forget what it was. Maybe we can block it with something nearby? More crate pushing. So this at least has some interesting stuff to it. I gotta dodge that again. Get over here. This is 100% a uh, reference to the North Crater part. So good. Taking out the bees. Can you go somewhere where I can actually hit you? Make me lose my mind.
Astral Remnant. That looked like a hot. Drogo, thank you so much for the gifted sub, man. Really appreciate that. And your own sub. Thank you. If you're new to the channel, I do not expect that kind of support. Man. Thank you very much. Man, the start of the song. Ba -na 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 -ba -na 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 so good. Gets me every time. And that bump on up. Bump on up. Then you finish the fight and it goes back to the slow clock metronome sound. So perfect, man. They were ahead of me. I was like, oh no, Cloud's gonna fall. Church style. Don't jinx it. We're going as fast as we can. Okay, it's good. Hostiles! It's Avalanche! Oh yeah. The triple soldier fight. Oh my goodness. Just pressured all of them. Strong button. You asked for it. Didn't even get to the end of the animation.
Give me my rude Reno fight. Guess we'll just have to pick this up next time. Get back here. Interesting way of doing that. Did it work? I really screwed up. And don't beat yourself up. First time and all that. Just gotta keep at it. Starting right now. We'll get through this, Aerith. Together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Can't give up now. Cool that they, like, implemented the clock. But, like... Could have just skipped over them and we would have gotten the idea that it was, you know, a time going back in time, right? Actually. Do I want to switch? Equipment. Sure, why not? Yeah, need to implement a all materia swap. <laughs> the amount of times I've had to do this in the story alone feel, feels like it's a bit of an omittance. It's also a bit of a me thing, because from what I've heard, other people said, like, they just keep everyone with materia. But I would imagine there's a good few of you that are doing the same thing that I'm doing. one works thank you very much for the 61 in live stream thank you for the gifted sub thank you thank you guys again. 